Good afternoon. Thanks for meeting with us again. I wanted to chat a little bit today about I-70 and some of the tightest areas in the construction. So we thought we'd run a little exercise with you. That sounds great. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. So on this roll plot we have right here, we actually have the current plans based on your consultant team. But what we're thinking is that based on our experience with the Ranger Parkway project that we worked on with Williams Brothers Construction, we might be able to find some efficiencies to make things a little bit easier. What we're thinking is that if we move the laydown area half a mile south, what this will do is it'll make the access easier and safer for our contractors. And in fact, we shouldn't need to have any additional permits because we have the space here. Wow, that's impressive. But you know, we don't own this piece of right of way yet. And I know it wouldn't impact permitting, but there might be private access issues. Would you recommend that we move forward with acquisition at this time? We had one of our trusted survey partners look at that exact idea. It turns out there's an extra parcel of land owned by the Home Depot up the road that could be used. One idea might be to buy the right of way, or an alternative might be you offer to build them their access in exchange for using the parcel for a few months during construction. Hmm, definitely something to consider since we don't really need that plot and it would ease congestion onto the frontage road from Home Depot's main access. That sounds good, but are we sure that the site layout will work for the contractor? Yes, we actually met with Melinda Yabara last week with Williams Brothers. She served as the construction manager for the Ranger Parkway project, and they actually had a similar laydown method. She's confident that this will work out in our project as well. So what about the railroad? We'd be crossing the tracks with our equipment, and we can't afford to be impeded by their operating schedule. We did take that into consideration. Union Pacific actually operates three times a day in this area, from 3 to 4 a.m., 11 to noon in the afternoon, and from 10 to 11 in the evenings. So we think that because there isn't going to be a whole lot of construction at the nighttime, the only conflicting potential time would be 11 to noon. And we think that the contractor schedule might be able to accommodate this. I'm not sold on that one. We've had some issues with the UP Railroad before on some projects, and I, I kind of like for them to really weigh in on this idea before we kind of go forward with it. Would it be okay if we contacted UP? We have some strong relationships there from our work on the Chicago-St. Louis high-speed rail line. We could get some honest feedback. I think that's a great idea, but let's be careful. Let's make sure they don't think you're speaking on CDOT's behalf. What other thoughts and ideas do you have? I like it. I really think it has potential. But it's still hard to visualize how it will work and whether it will really ease the traffic concerns that the community has. I think I might have the trick for that. What if we tried to put this into a 3D model so that you could visualize this and also see the traffic moving along? We have some new virtual reality tools and we think this might be a really good chance for CDOT to pilot some of them. Be a good chance to see the laydown area, the MOT plan, all of them in a 3D visual form. And it'd be a good chance for us to see what maybe we could do for a public engagement tool. That sounds really interesting. You know, our Office of Innovation might want to get involved. And maybe we could pick it up as an R&D initiative. Can you send me a quick white paper so I can send it to my peers? Sure, no problem. Well, I know we're getting close to using up the hour that you set aside for us. Maybe we can stop here and we can meet again after we followed up on some of the action items that we've talked about. We did want to spend a moment talking to you about potential teaming partners. We've spoken to several geotechnical and survey firms, and we were wondering which ones you thought would bring the most value to the project. You know, Mike, all the usuals are pretty good. Um, no one's really in a negative light with us right now, although Farnsworth Geotechnical is pretty booked up on the Red Boat project, so their capacity might be an issue. And Bill Stedman just left my survey crew to go to Meriwether Survey, and while he's leaving me kind of shorthanded, I appreciate somebody on the other side that knows CDOT's process. Okay. As we build our team, I'd really like to get your input on our structure and how it might align with your organization. Are you okay with that? Yes, of course. We'd be happy to, but we know you consultants know best. Well, only if we get good insight from our clients. Okay, to summarize, we've agreed to talk to Union Pacific around the proposed laydown area, and you've asked for a white paper around virtual reality pilot. I think we'll leave it there for today. 
really appreciate you taking the time to work with us on this exercise. I hope you found it useful. It was a lot of fun.